Well, they said that there was going to be a special do at the Theatre of Comedy, which was newly formed when we, all of us were meeting, and we were going to the special do, and my agent rang and said, for goodness sake, wear something really nice and have your hair done. So I made sure I had a lovely, a lovely dress on, a Bruce Earl Field, which I wish I still had, absolutely gorgeous, and had my hair done and everything, and ride with the thing. And then, of course, they uh, suddenly Eamon appeared, and of course, I was looking around thinking, oh my goodness, it's somebody's this is your life, how amazing. And of course, then realised it's horrible to mine. <laughs> and it really is a terrible shock, terrible shock. Because you just think, no, this can't be. And suddenly your mind goes, because you think all of those people have been lying to you. All of them have been lying to you for weeks. And also, who are they going to bring on? Will you remember them? And so they quickly give you a glass of champagne, because obviously you're in shock. I was surprised at the Ambassador's Theatre. And then taxi to the studio. Oh, the Royalty Theatre, um, and I um, sat in the dressing room. It can't have been very long, an hour or so, because they just had to get everyone else there. Well, first, the first lot, of course, is all the people who'd been at the reception at the Ambassadors for the Theatre of Comedy all then came in grinning, and you thought, oh, so you all knew as well. So obviously, John Alston, Richard Bryas, and Michael Dennison, Paul Eddington, Frank Finlay, all people that I've worked with, of course, who are and all wonderful. And uh, Alvin, of course, who I swore never to forgive for doing it to me and then my mum and my little boy who was about eight then and my dad and my mother-in-law uh, Alvin's mother uh, they they all sat near me looking a bit gobsmacked as well I saw a bit everyone looked like they were just about to go to the dentist or something <laughs> you don't think any, I didn't think anything I didn't know anyone would turn up I mean, my English teacher Miss Acre hadn't seen her since I was 15 who was the great influence on my life, of course. She was the one reason I loved uh, English. And school friends from the grammar school. Old Slobbins and <laughs> Ruth Eccles. <laughs> Carol Sala, who now is a very well-known journalist. When we, the three, four of us were inseparable at school. So that was extraordinary. You think, how did they find all these people? Gary, from uh, who was in Skippy, uh, they brought her, because they had filmed clips with um, John and Googie, John was our producer of Skippy, and then they had Gary, and then they brought him, actually brought him, flew him over, which is amazing, because he's never done any Skippy reunion stuff ever, because he gave it all up and became a hotelier in the um, Gold Coast, and it was amazing to see him, have we not seen him since 1969? And of course at the end my sister, who lived in California at the time, and was a great friend of ours, Phil Gardner, who was a lifelong friend, known him since I was six months old, and taught us to ride, my sister and I. And he, I had Shetland ponies at the time, and he had this brilliant idea of bringing on Sophie, who'd already been shown in a clip, right, with, with Phil, on my big horse, Olive, and this tiny child saying, look, mummy, I'm riding Olive. And Olive was 16 too, this tiny thing. And then suddenly the doors open, and there was Phil with the Shetland pony. And of course, I was so busy going, oh, Rio, my pony, oh, my daughter, oh. Hadn't noticed the groom by the side who then took off her scarf, and there was my sister, they'd flown in from California. Oh, incredible, absolutely incredible, especially the pony. I thought, how on earth did they get the pony to London from our house? Incredible, absolutely incredible. Who was good as gold? Just walked on as though she always did this sort of thing. I think the pony was the most relaxed person there. Well, A, I thought it was a fantastic programme, because it was very entertaining. Uh, very interesting about people's lives in a very gentle way of finding out people's lives because one of the things you think, I hope they don't do anything horrible. Uh, and of course, because we've all had things in our life you'd rather not mention, but of course they do, but in a very gentle sort of, and they sort of pass over, been married before and everything, and it's very gentle. I think people like that. It was a very good family show and very interesting. It's a bit like Desert Island Discs, really. Music. It was amusing, you know, they always had lovely anecdotes and they always had ah moments and I just think it was very, very good entertainment and it's a shame we don't have it now. I just thought Em was such a lovely man, so gentle and kind and caring about everybody and having been a guest on others when of course all you do is go and have a party, which is brilliant. Uh, he was always so welcoming, talked to everyone, just a remarkable man and very tall as well, a big man. Oh my God, it was a wonderful party. It's one of the best parties in the world ever because you've had all that adrenaline and fear and it's all people you know and love and people obviously you haven't seen for a while. It was fair. I think it went until two in the morning. It was an absolutely brilliant party, obviously not with a pony. While it was actually being recorded, it was very nerve-wracking. It was like a first night. But afterwards, of course, 
it's thrilling, like a first night, and also extremely memorable. I mean, your own, you never ever forget because it was such an extraordinary event, as I say, to have all those people, all your loved ones, all your close friends, people you adore, all there in one place. A gift.